हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू दी अनदर लेक्चर ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग केमिस्ट्री कोर्स एज वी आर कंटिन्यूइंग द यूनिट थर्ड इन द प्रीवियस लेक्चर वी हैव स्टार्टेड विद द टॉपिक करोजन कंट्रोल इन विच वी हैव डिस्कस द वेरियस मेथड्स फॉर करोजन कंट्रोल थ्री मेथड्स वी हैव डिस्कस्ड इन डिटेल इन आर प्रीवियस क्लास दोज वर द एप्रोप्रिएट डिजाइनिंग इन विच वी लर्न अबाउट द मेटेलिक स्ट्रक्चरल आस्पेक्ट एज वेल एज द डिजाइनिंग आस्पेक्ट टू प्रोटेक्ट फ्रॉम द करोजन देन वी हैव स्टार्टेड विद द मॉडिफिकेशन ऑफ एनवायरमेंट इन विच वी हैव डिस्कस द थ्री डीज एंड देन वी हैव स्टार्टेड द यूज ऑफ करोजन इनहेबिटर्स इन विच वी हैव लर्न अबाउट द एनोडिक इनहेबिटर्स एंड द कैथोडिक इनहेबिटर्स and we are also we were uh, also discussing that corrosion control means to minimize the rate of corrosion reaction so let us continue the topic corrosion control here again today we will going to discuss the two methods to protect the corrosion cathodic protection or electrochemical method and second one is the protective coatings which includes metallic coatings and the organic coatings so let us begin with the cathodic protection or the electrochemical method for the corrosion control the cathodic protection is to force the metal to be protected to behave like a cathode as a result of which it is not corroded because we know corrosion always takes place at the anodic area because at the anodic area only the oxidation reaction takes place that is why if we forcefully made the metal cathode to so automatically it is saved and this can be done by use of sacrificial anode which is known as the galvanic protection and second use of impressed current this method is known as the cathodic protection but must remember that metal which is to be protected is forced to act as the cathode thus prevented from the corrosion so what we are going to do here here suppose this is our base metal or this is our metal metallic structure and we want to save our metallic structure now we are uh, we know that the corrosion always takes place at the anodic part suppose this is our anodic area at the metallic surface this area is the anodic area at our metallic surface and this area is the cathodic area on our metallic surface red one is the cathodic blue one is the anodic area and we know that the anodic area suppose we are considering the iron metal here the at the anodic area always the oxidation reaction takes place in which metal undergoes oxidation and electrons are released the electrons which are released at the cathodic area now move towards the electrons which are released at the anodic area now move towards the cathodic area and at the cathodic area consumption of these electrons results in the hydrogen generation that means hydrogen gas is evolved or oxygen absorption depending upon the medium that is uh, we know through the procedure of the corrosion reaction mechanism of the corrosion reaction now in the cathodic protection we are going to made this anodic area forcefully the cathodic one we are forcefully made it the cathode if this area becomes cathode then no oxidation would be taken place at this area so this metal will be saved now question comes how we made this anode to the cathode how we convert this anode to the cathodic area two types of methods are there first we connect this anodic area to the more anodic metal in the 
case of iron suppose we are connecting here with the more anodic metal so this is known as the sacrificial anodic protection or the galvanic protection now since this metallic structure is connected to the more active metal so what will going to change here this metal will behave as the anode and our metal which is to be protected is now becomes the cathodic so we, we forcefully made it the cathode because we are connecting the metal to the more anodic metal so this is the sacrificial anodic protection or the cathodic protection second one method is if we connect the metal to the external dc source if we connect to the it to the external dc source and this external uh, connect the uh, metal to which we want to protect through the cathodic part of the external dc source if we connect it to the cathodic part then it forcefully it now behave as the cathode so if we connect it from the external dc source cathodic part negative part so it is now becomes the cathodic and to make the connection complete we may connect it through the inert electrode like graphite so forcefully we are making this part as the cathode so by these two way we can we can change our anodic part to the cathodic part so these two methods are galvanic protection and the impressed current cathodic protection so let us discuss one by one first is the sacrificial or an galvanic anodic protection as we just now discussed in this type of protection the metal structure to be protected is made the cathode by connecting it by wire to more anodic metal as a result the corrosion takes place at the anodic metal this side and the metal structure is saved from the corrosion because now it is the cathodic so it is saved from the corrosion suppose this is the underground pipe of the iron we want to save this pipe from the corrosion so what we are doing here we are connecting this iron pipeline through a wire with the magnesium rod since magnesium is more active than the iron so now magnesium will behave as anode and iron will behave as the cathode so sacrificially magnesium saves the iron that is why it is called the sacrificial anode and the method is called sacrificial anodic protection or the galvanic protection since our base metal which is to be protected is now becomes cathodic so automatically it is safe from the corrosion second method is the impressed current cathodic protection in this method the object to be protected is made cathode by connecting it to the negative terminal of the dc source so if we connect it with the negative terminal that means it now becomes the cathode since it is now the cathodic part that is why oxidation would not takes place at this part to complete the circuit we are connecting the inert anodic area or the anodic rod of the inert material like graphite with the base up metal pipe so now what would happen the positive terminal is connected to the insoluble anode like graphite this is the in insoluble and inert anode or the platinum we may use here the electrons flows to the metal structure and as a result it act as a cathode so because it is attached to the negative terminal that is why electrons flows from this to this direction therefore now this structure becomes as the cathode 
and it is the it is now the protected it may possible that after some time this anode may destroy so what we can do here we can replace periodically this anode to the fresh rod so by these two methods we made a base metal which is to be protected forcefully the cathode since it is now made the cathode that is why we prevent it from the oxidation hence corrosion can be controlled now moving towards the next topic that is the protective coatings the corrosion of the metallic surface can be prevented by coating of metal surface with non corroding or least corroding material this is known as the protective coatings these protective coatings are mainly of two types metallic coatings and the organic coatings now let us discuss metallic coatings first the coating of base metal with a noble metal is very effective in protecting it from corrosive environment but the properties of the metallic coating should be the coating should be uniform in thickness it should be chemical in a chemically inert and its its adherence properties are should be very good so these type of metallic coatings may be effect very effective to prevent from the corrosion based on the nature of the coating metal the metallic coatings are of two types anodic coating and the cathodic coating let us discuss one by one first the anodic coating the anodic coating is done when anodic material is anodic to the base metal that means the coating material is more active than the base metal which we want to protect okay so anodic coating protects the base metal by sacrificial manner look at here this is the steel part this this is the steel if we want it to protect from the corrosion so we coat the zinc layer on the steel article that means zinc coating is done on the steel because zinc since zinc is more active than the steel or the iron that is why it is the more anodic material metal than the steel so if corrosive environment is there then zinc coating is undergoes in corrosion while steel structure or the iron structure is saved because now this steel is the cathodic because it is connected with the more anodic zinc area it is covered with the zinc layer and zinc is more anodic so if corrosive environment is there then corrosion of which metal takes place first corrosion of the zinc takes place first because zinc is more anodic than the steel or the iron structure why it is so because the electrode potential of the zinc is lower than the base metal that is the iron so the coating metal act here as the anode rather than the base metal and now our base metal is the cathodic that's why it is protected so anodic coating is the coating in which the base metal base metal uh, what is the base metal the base metal is the metal which is to be coated that means which is to be protected so the anodic coating is the coating in which the base metal is coated with the more anodic metal more active metal so in such case coating of the and more anodic metal is done on to the base metal suppose here one crack in the zinc layer so what would happened if one crack is there then zinc part is the anodic and iron part is the cathodic this is the anodic part 
and this is the cathodic part and since cathodic area is a small and anodic area is very large that is why if corrosion takes place then rate of corrosion is very low because cathodic area is very small so in case some scratch in the zinc coating is there then too the rate of corrosion is very low this is the example of the galvanizing galvanizing is the coating of zinc on the iron or the steel articles this is the example of anodic coating now cathodic coating in this type of coating the base metal base metal which is to be coated is the base metal the base metal is coated with the more cathodic metal that means noble or inert metal so coating of the more noble metal or more inert metal is to be done onto the base metal so what happen in this case suppose this is our base metal iron okay the metal which is very less reactive than the iron is coated onto the surface of the iron here we are taking the example of tin right so tin coating is done onto the iron surface in this way uniform coating is done since as per the reactive with the order the iron is more reactive than the tin so tin is now behaving as the cathode right and iron is the anode so since if corrosive environment is there so since tin is the cathode so corrosion would not take place and iron is covered by this cathodic area so iron is already protected so in this case corrosion would not takes place and iron structure is completely saved but in such cases if some scratch is there in the coating layer suppose some scratch is there now this is the dangerous condition why because if some scratch is in the tin layer is there then a small anodic area and large cathodic area will be generated which increases the rate of corrosion so we must take in care into consideration that if tin coating or the cathodic coating is done then uniformity must be maintained no scratch would be there in the tin coating if any scratch or any crack is there in the tin coating then rate of corrosion will be increases because there is the formation of the small anodic area and large cathodic area would takes place which increases the rate of corrosion so this is the drawback of the tin coating that we must take in care that our coating should be uniform and no scratch or no crack in the coating would be there now these are the two types of coating anodic and the cathodic coating now question comes how we can coat the metal to the another metal so these are the co coating processes by which we can coat or we can cover the metal with the coating material coating metal these methods are electroplating metal cladding metal spraying cementation and hot dipping let us discuss one by one each first is the electroplating method in this process a plating bath is taken which consisting of a thin cathode and the anode and an electrolyte solution the cathode is made by the metal which has to be coated that means cathode is made by the base metal which is to be prevented by the from the corrosion so this is the base metal cathode and anode is made by the inert material or the coating metal okay which is to be deposited 
and the electrolyte solution this is the electrolyte solution the electrolyte solution contains the metal ions to be deposited okay so three things are there first is the cathode cathode is the made up of the base metal which is to be coated anode is made up of the inert material or the coating metal the electrolyte solution is such that it must contain the metal ions which is to be deposited onto the cathodic metal or the cathodic area now when current is passed then the coating metal ions migrates towards the cathodic area because cations move towards the cathode so these ions migrate towards the cathodic area and get deposited in the form of the thin layer onto the cathodic area and uniform coating of the coating material takes place onto the cathode for example if we want to coat nickel onto the iron so what we have to do this cathodic is part cathode is made up made up of the iron and the solution electrolyte solution would be the nickel ammonium sulfate okay cathode is of the iron which is the base metal which is to be coated this is this is the solution nickel solution of nickel ammonium sulfate in which nickel plus two ions are there and this would be made up of the aluminium or any inert material platinum or the graphite electrode right so when we start the current then nickel plus two ion moves towards the cathodic part and slowly slowly deposited on this iron cathode and uniform layer of the nickel is coated on the base metal so this is the electroplating method second method of the metallic coating is the metal cladding metal cladding is the process in which the metal or the alloy to be protected is sandwiched between the two dense and homogeneous layer of coating metal protecting metal these protecting metal layers are bonded firmly to the base metal by pressing them through the rollers under high pressure and heat so a clad metal is a composite material consisting of a base metal which is sandwiched between two protecting metal layer suppose if we want to prevent Uh, protect or if we want to coat the aluminium on to the iron or to the base metal so through the rollers the base metal is placed between two aluminium sheets so the base metal is here and it is placed between two aluminium sheet and bit through the rollers at the high temperature and pressure we sandwiched all the three layers that is why ultimately the composite aluminium clad sheet is prepared and the base metal is both side covered with the aluminium sheets so this is the metal cladding third one is the metal spraying in this process the coating is obtained from the molten metal spray over the surface of base metal by means of spraying gun in this process the base metal is first prepared to make its surface such that the adherence of the applied coating is good so some roughness is created onto the base metal then the molten metal molten metal is uh, which metal which is to be coated okay so the molten metal to be coated is then sprayed over the roughened surface of the base metal so this type of coating is slightly porous thus to provide the smoothness of this type of coating the paint is applied on the final coating layer next one is the cementation cementation process is done for the small articles like screws bolts nut bolts 
these type of small articles are coated with this method cementation it is the process in which a protective alloy is coated on the base metal by heating the base metal articles in intimate contact with the powdered metal which is to be coated so in this process the coating is done by heating the base metal in a revolving drum containing a powder of the coating metal a drum is there in which powder of the coating metal is already placed now our base metal articles are placed in this coating metals drum and the coating metal diffuses into the base metal resulting in the formation of the layers of alloy of varying composition in such case the coating thickness can be controlled by varying the time of treatment that means rolling time and the temperature by this way we can control the thickness of the coating layer now next important process is the hot tipping process this is the process in which coating is done when the metal to be coated is immersed in a bath of the molten coating metal that means in the molten coating metal base metal is dipped that is why it is called hot dipping method this process is generally used for developing a coating of low melting metals like zinc lead aluminum and tin or on to the relatively higher melting metals like copper iron and steel hot dipping method is mainly used for the galvanizing and tinning galvanizing is the coating of zinc on iron while tinning is the coating of tin on iron so both these for both these type of coating the hot dipping method is used first we are going to discuss here the galvanizing method in the galvanizing method zinc is coated over the iron or the steel articles or the steel sheets this is the galvanizing process okay now these two bath this bath is the purifying bath in which the steel article is first pickled with the dilute h2so4 in this the dilute h2so4 is used to remove the rust dust and other impurities from the surface of the iron sheet the temperature maintained in this bath is 60 to 90 degree centigrade and iron sheet are placed in this bath for the 15 to 20 minutes then the base metal is washed in the washing bath and then dry through uh, dry through the hot air in the next step the metal is dipped in a molten zinc bath at 430 Four twenty-five to four thirty degrees centigrade. The surface of this bath is covered with the ammonium chloride flux to prevent oxide formation of the molten zinc. So now zinc is coated in this bath onto the iron sheet. The iron sheet, which is coated with zinc layer, is then taken out. of the bath and pass through a pair of the hot rollers which removes the excess of zinc from the iron sheet and zinc is adhered a thin layer only the thin layer of zinc is adhered on the iron sheet which is finally annealed at a temperature 650 degree centigrade and then cooled slowly so by this way galvanized sheet is prepared so this is the example of the anodic coating in which zinc is coated onto the iron sheet now for the tinning tinning is the process of coating tin on iron or steel first 
the base metal is first pickled with the dilute H2SO4 to remove the dust and dirt particle onto the surface. Now, this iron sheet is passed to the molten till covered with the zinc chloride flux. flux. This is the zinc chloride flux which protects the molten tin from the atmosphere contamination. This iron sheet is now passed through this molten tin. Then tin coated sheet is this. Then it, it is passed through a series of the rollers immersed in a palm oil. To remove the excess tin and produces a thin film of uniform thickness of the tin. In last, the palm oil is removed from the surface by absorption of the sawdust which in turn are removed by brushing and finally sheet are polished. So this is the example of the cathodic coating. Now very interesting is the comparison between the galvanizing and tinning. Galvanizing is the coating of zinc on iron sheet while tinning is the coating of tin on iron sheet. Galvanizing is the example of the anodic coating while tinning is the example of the cathodic coating. We know the zinc has the lower electrode potential than iron while in case of tin it has the higher electrode potential than the iron. In galvanizing Zinc protects the base metal sacrificially while in tinning it protects the base metal due to its noble character and corrosion resistance nature because tin is more noble than the iron. In any discontinuity occurs in the coating the base metal is not corroded until all the zinc destroy because in this case base metal is the cathodic and zinc is the anodic. But in case of tinning, if any discontinuity occurs in the coating, the corrosion of the base metal is speeded up because in such case small anodic area and large cathodic area would be there. That is why rate of corrosion increases in case of any scratch is there in the tin layer. Now second coating we have learned about the organic coating. Two types of protecting coatings we have discussed metallic coating and the organic coatings. In organic uh, the organic coatings includes the paint, varnish, enamels etc. These are the inert organic barriers which provides corrosion resistance as well as the decorative look to the structure which is coated. So basically the metallic structure are painted. Okay, or varnish or enamels are used to coat the base metal which prevents the base metal from the atmospheric contact that is why these prevents uh, the base metal from the corrosion. Now let us revise what we have uh, discussed in today's lecture. Today we are continuing the corrosion control topic in which first we have discussed the cathodic protection in this protection the base metal is forcefully made cathode for the control of the corrosion. This can be done by two types. One is the galvanic protection in which is also called the sacrificial anodic protection and second one is the impressed current cathodic protection. These we have discussed in detail impressed current cathodic protection. Then we have started with the protective coatings. Two types of coatings we have discussed metallic and the organic coatings. In metallic coatings the two types of coatings are there anodic coatings and the cathodic coatings. Example of anodic coating is the galvanizing. Example of cathodic coating is the tinning. All the processes by which we can do this type of coating onto the base metal we have discussed in the detail. Then we have uh, discussed what are the organic coatings. Now it is time for the learning check. Read the question and think for its answer. We will discuss its answer in our uh, live class tomorrow. The question is for cooking utensils which steel is 
preferred uh, this is the typo error which steel is preferred and why galvanized steel or the tinned steel which type of steel articles are used for the cooking think for its answer we will discuss its answer in detail in our next live class tomorrow till then take good care of yourself and keep enjoy e learning at home thank you